Samuel Henry Cress, the descendant of German and Irish immigrants, was born in Pennsylvania in 1863. And as the retail revolution of the late 1800s began, he too jumped into the business, establishing his first store in 1887. This stationery and notion store, located in Nanticoke, Pennsylvania, was a precursor to his chain of five and dime stores, but provided him with the experience to expand. In 1896, Cress officially opened his first S.H. Cress & Company five and dime store in Memphis, Tennessee. The store became well known for selling affordable, durable, and cheerful domestic merchandise. As Cress built his chain, he focused on grand architecture and elegant decor for his stores, which competed with Woolworths and other dime stores. To distinguish his stores from those of his competitors, he hired staff architects who designed sturdy cement facades, incorporating terracotta and art deco elements. Cress envisioned his stores as works of public art that would contribute to the cityscape. Cress achieved retail success, not merely through standardized signage and graphics, but through the distinctive architecture and efficient design of his stores. Regardless of their style, from elaborate Gothic revival to streamlined Art Deco, the stores were uniquely designed to be integral parts of their business districts, which helped shape Main Street America. By the time Samuel Cress died in 1955, his chain had grown to close to 200 stores located in small and large towns across the country. Along with ornate storefronts, the store had also grown to include lunch counters, which were popular features of the time. In 1960, the Nashville, Tennessee Cress store played a role in the civil rights movement because the lunch counter was segregated, as were all Crest lunch counters. Peaceful protesters and citizens of Nashville led a successful boycott to integrate the location, which was well before other stores followed suit. In 1964, Genesco bought the Crest Company. Immediately, the new owners began abandoning its Main Street stores and began moving operations to shopping malls. As with many retailers of the time, Genesco quickly found out that shopping malls were not the answer. So by 1980, they were liquidating Cress and closing down stores. What was left of the Cress empire was sold to McCrory stores on January 1st, 1981. Most of these stores continued to operate under the Cress name until McCrory stores also met the same fate, closing in 2001. Surviving Crest buildings around the country have since been converted to residences, restaurants, theaters, and nightclubs. The ornate facades with the Crest name emblazoned across the top 
heavy bronze doors, terrazzo floors, and polished marble and wood interiors were unusual enough for people to recognize the significance and preserve the buildings, many of which are now listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. The National Building Museum in Washington, D.C. holds the company's building records, consisting of some 6,000 architectural plans and 7,000 photographs. The collection details the design, construction, and operation of 221 crest stores in 28 states, stretching from New York to Hawaii. Samuel Cress was a generous philanthropist and art collector. In 1929, he established the Cress Foundation to assemble and distribute an amazing collection of old master paintings and other European works of art. The foundation continues to devote its resources to advancing the preservation and study of European art and architecture and offers a range of grants and fellowships to art historians, conservators, curators, and librarians. The legacy of Cress not only defined shopping along Main Street USA, but it also added to the architectural beauty that still exists within our downtown districts. Over 100 years of five and dime stores have all but disappeared, but the Cress name is one that still looms large over downtown Americana. As always, thank you so much for watching.